Hi and welcome to this week's Wine Buff video. For anyone who's a fan of the Wine Buff Facebook page, you'll notice that we're getting pretty close to the 500 fan mark. And if you're uh, keeping up to date with the Facebook page, you'll also notice that I stupidly promised a few weeks back that uh, if we got to 500 mark, that I would record a video of me singing and playing acoustic guitar to a wine related song. That looks pretty likely that's going to happen next week because uh, we've had a recent surge in the last week of fans and we're only about 38 fans away. So because next week's video is pretty much likely to be me making a fool of myself, I thought we'd do something a little bit more educational this week. So we're going to have a look at corks. Before we do that though, I'd like to do a quick bit of promoting and uh, because it's a bank holiday this weekend, I decided to put on a special offer for uh, all my customers. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, what's known as a wine pick and mix. So we're going to have the table at the, in the shop and we're going to have it loaded up with a load of great wine. We're going to have at least 10 different wines, all very good quality uh, and all very, very easy drinking, which is perfect for the bank holiday. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to let you pick any six of those in any type of order you want. And we're only going to charge you 60 euros for them. And not only that, if you pick the six at 60, we'll also throw in this here bottle of pink cava at half price. So if you get the six for 60, we'll give you this fantastic bottle of pink cava, sparkling cava from, from Spain. And we're only gonna charge you 7.99, usual price is 16. So that's the first part. The second thing is if you go for say 12 bottles of the wine in the pick and mix, and again, in any order that you want, we're gonna charge you 120 euros and you're gonna get this absolutely free, a beautiful bottle of uh, Prosecco and it's usually worth uh, 18 euros itself. So buy 12 in any order and you get this free. So definitely worth popping into the shop this bank holiday weekend. And as I say, we're gonna do something a little bit more educational. So uh, we're gonna have a look at corks. Now corks is uh, it's probably something that people don't quite understand and it comes up in the wine courses that we put on time and time again. So I thought I'd quickly run through them. First cork you see here is a natural cork. It's actually taken from a cork tree, so it's basically just plugged out. If you can just imagine a plugging machine just to pop out these corks. It's quite expensive, it's uh, one euro fifty. Uh, the positive things about a cork like this here is that uh, it uh, allows the perfect amount of uh, air to go through into the bottle of wine as it ages. So any age-worthy red wines that are quite expensive, this is the type of cork you want. So it'll basically let the air through there, it'll soften up the tannins, which is the sort of harsh element of a red wine, which needs to soften up over the years. And this type of cork allows the perfect amount of oxygen through, the, through it into the wine to age the wine perfectly. Now the downside of having a natural cork just like this is, uh, is that it's the only sort of cork that allows you to have corked wines. Now corked wines are not bits of cork that float in the wine from opening it poorly or anything like that there. Corked wines are actually a bacteria that naturally occur within the cork tree. And what happens is that once the wine touches that cork, it imparts that a, a disgusting sort of taste and smell. And that taste and smell is basically sort of wet, mouldy carpet. So if you get that smell in a wine when you're sticking your nose in it, once you've opened it, you know that that's a corked wine. It's similar to whenever you're in a restaurant. Once you actually uh, are, are given a bottle of wine, they pour you a small sample. They don't actually get you to taste it to see whether you like it or not. It's to test whether or not it's a corked bottle of wine. So once they give it to you, if you, if they, if you smell it and it smells like sort of wet, mouldy car carpet, then you know it's corked and hand it back. So that's the, uh, the, the normal cork. We then move on to this one, which is kind of like a composite cork. If you look, it looks like a normal cork, but when you go up close, you see it's made up of lots of little bits of shredded cork. Again, it's, uh, it's, it's not a bad cork. It tends to be used for slightly less expensive wines because uh, the, this, the one that made from a, a cork tree, from a, a sort of slab of cork, are, tend to be better, better quality, and they're better for the more expensive wines. So, um, so uh, if you get this in a sort of cheap, cheaper bottle, with, uh, which is meant to be drunk quite young, then there's no problem at all. Next, we come up to the plastic corks. Plastic corks are uh, a little bit sort of different from the, the normal corks in that they probably let in a little bit too much air for any wine that's meant to be kept for a long period of time. So any age worthy red, uh, this will probably let in too much oxygen over the period of 10, 15 years, so it will spoil the wine. But it's perfect for a, for a white wine or a wine that's, that's generally meant to be drunk within a, a year or two because it, it won't let in enough oxygen over that period of time to ruin the wine. And the positive thing about this type of cork is that uh, you'll never have a corked bottle because obviously you can't have bacteria from the plastic itself. So this is one that's made to look like a normal cork and then you'll have other ones like this one which is just a, a red coloured one. Finally we have the screw cap. People to ask me whether it's bad to have a screw cap. 
It is, I think, to be honest, for a, a long-lived quality wine that's meant to be aged for 10, 15, 20 years. But for the likes of a, a white wine that tends to be drunk within two, two years, then there's nothing wrong with this at all. And indeed, we have some screw cap wines in the shop. Uh, as I say, these are different from, from the normal corks in that they don't let any air in at all. So again, anything that's meant to be drunk young, one to two years from purchase, there's absolutely nothing wrong. And, uh, and these wine closures are fine. But they aren't for a long-lived red wine that needs to be aged for 10, 20 years because in effect you're just completely capping it and you're not letting air in to soften the tannins over time. So that's pretty much it. I hope I've uh, explained a little bit more about corks. And uh, I'd like to see you obviously over the weekend to take a, uh, to avail of our uh, wine wine offers that are here. And uh, if I don't, have a good weekend, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.